Hey, y'all. Do your friendships match the capacity that you have for them? Like, this is something I've really been thinking about for quite some time. And I really want to talk about, like, how can we be intentional with our friendships and even strategic? Because when you're engaging in friendships and you're looking to maybe make new friends or just expand your circle or even just, you know, with the current friends that you have, I really think it's important to consider the capacity of the friendship on both sides and consider the alignment because A lot of times there's a mismatch in capacity and alignment on one of the ends. And so even though the friendship might feel good and even though you might enjoy like being friends with that person, there can be challenges if you have capacity and alignment issues. And so I was thinking about, you know, I have a friend who I could sit and I could talk to her for hours and hours on end for many, many days. And we would just keep finding things to talk about. And then I think of another friend or just friends in general where I'm like, okay, I'm good to check in with you like maybe once a quarter. I'll call you up and like, you know, maybe once a month we have a little quick text message exchange or voice note and we're good. And, you know, sometimes it's going to depend on the friend what that friendship is going to look like. But the reason why I bring this up is because When the enjoyment of the friendship by, let's say, friend A is different from the enjoyment of the friendship from friend B, and one person feels like they get more value out of it, or one person feels like they give more to the friendship than the other, that causes problems in friendships. And, you know, I think in general, friendships are, you know, you're going to always have ebbs and flows. But I think there are some friendships where, It's just off balance, the giving and the receiving, who's benefiting, who's enjoying. It's just off. And I'm not even saying there's anything wrong with it, because sometimes I think that if both parties are okay with it, then it's fine. Like, I remember having certain friendships, especially when I was younger, where I would always be like, I can think of these people by name. I would always be the person to reach out every single time. And it kind of annoyed me, but the reason why I kept those friends is because once I did reach out, they poured back in with so much value and they were fully present for me. It's just like they're not reach outers, for lack of a better word. And so I was like, okay, cool. Now, if I was reaching out and they weren't really being a friend once I contacted them and they weren't really checking on me and it wasn't mutual, then I would let it go. But they would be fully engaged after the fact. So I was like, okay, that's cool. So... Back to capacity, though, like if you want to talk to a friend a couple days a week and they want to talk to you once a quarter, that's a mismatch, right? Like you're not in alignment. And, you know, if you're in a romantic relationship, you tend to have those conversations, right? These are my expectations. These are my needs, et cetera, et cetera. This is what I can give. This is what I need back. But we don't really do that in friendships. And I'm starting to really believe that it would be better for us to do it. And like, I don't know. I'm curious to know what you guys think, but this is just something I've been pondering in my mind. And I'm thinking that it would be better to have these conversations. And maybe it depends on like how close you are to the friend if you're going to have this kind of communication. Again, you know, if you have a good friend, you probably can have such open conversations with them. And maybe you touch base with them every month or two, right? I have a friend a really good friend of mine, friends for years. And like, I don't think we ever go more than two months without touching base, but like we don't often touch base more than that because it would be too much for them, right? Like it would just be overwhelmed. I'm a what I'm well aware of that friend's capacity and that friend does not have the capacity nor the desire, quite frankly, to check in that frequently. But, um, you know, a text message here, they're fine. And then, you know, a phone call every like, month and a half two months it's great but if I was to call that friend and have multiple conversations a month they would be like entirely too entirely too overwhelming and so we've had that conversation we we literally did have a sit down about this because we were out of alignment at one point in our friendship and you know we both kind of explained our needs and where we're at and what we can give and I do really think that that's healthy because I've seen some people who try to make friends with others who just do not have the capacity to give back and there's not an alignment match. And so then what happens is you end up having this friendship void because 
that friend is not able to meet the gap that you have in the first place. You know what I mean? And so, and the other person, they weren't really just looking for a friend. They were looking for someone who was going to be more available to them to help fill that loneliness gap that they were feeling or time gap or entertainment gap. Side note, like, have you ever had a friend who, like, not much is going on in their life, but they, so they live off what's going on in your life? Like, these are real things that people need to talk about. Anyways, I'm going to get off topic here, so let me stay to the the fact. I really, I think I'm going to do, like, a more full-fledged episode when I come back for my second season in 2024, because... I think it's really worth talking about friendships, conversations, capacity, alignment, honesty, open communication, all of that jazz. Anyways, that's all I got. Until next time, continue to serve yourself, your loved ones, and your communities from a full cup.